I, as the agency user, could go to all of the sub accounts, he would only see one of them. If you were reselling this or white labeling it to other users, they would just log into your domain and see one account where they could start to use it and put together all of the marketing tools that high level comprises. That is step one for a lot of folks. Let's talk about what you do when you actually have either a customer or you're your own customer. So in high level, the dynamic is you sort of have like this agency view, this master dashboard, and then there's like these sub accounts. And it's, this is a counterintuitive understanding is that you as the business, even if you've got multiple brands, let's say you're doing this, you're like, I've got an idea for a SaaS brand. I've got an idea for my agency brand. And I actually also happen to have a coaching business. And so you're like, I've got three different businesses. When you start off inside of the system, you're given this sort of like, agency portal looking thing. And it can be confusing because you think, is this where I go to manage my brand? And the truth of it is no, you basically, you're just doing like logistic setup utility stuff behind the scenes from the agency view. So you end up creating sub accounts for yourself. So you are a sub account of your own brand. If you're listening, I'll talk through this process. If you're on YouTube with us, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen so you can kind of you know, follow along with me as we figure out how to, how to do this well. So I want to talk through, this is like step one. <laughs> and, and this could be also maybe you sold your brother or your, your sister and they've got a business or your dad has a business, your mom has a business, whatever it is. And uh, you're like, how do I just create them an account? The easiest way to do this is from the sub accounts area. So from the agency view, there's a sub account view. This is where, you, it's, like I said, it's just top level managing, you know, stats and, and uh, performance. You're not actually doing any of the things, but this is where you can go to create a sub account. So there's a, you know, big blue button to create a sub account. This is creating, it could be for yourself. Like I said, for a first customer, this is not automated. This is completely manual. There are ways to automate it, but I encourage everyone, the first accounts you're going to do don't go through the work of making it automated before you do it manually. Everyone has to go through, I, I think you effectively have to, and I also encourage it that you go through the process of making a manual sub account. So right at the top, right, someone's going to get stuck, SaaS account versus regular account. Do they need to know about that? That was literally the next oh, piece cool. in here is, is uh, <laughs> there's two types of accounts, SaaS account and regular account. Um, SaaS account is when you're reselling to someone else. So you can manually go and create a SaaS account. This is intended with the idea of like there and there, you're a customer, you're essentially reselling the brand. For your own brand, you do not want it to be a SaaS account. It is nonsense for you to play a uh, middleman billing of yourself. So you would choose regular account. Uh, in effect, this will allow you to use all the things without having to, you know, separate, like pay yourself twice kind of thing. You don't want to send, you don't want to pay yourself into your Stripe account to just use the system. So for most folks, the first accounts are just regular accounts. I will also say this. You can change the style of account later on. So it is very common and totally easy to go back and change a regular account into a SaaS account. If you start with a SaaS account and you didn't intend for it to be a SaaS account, it's only annoying because you will have to create a subscription for yourself to your own Stripe account. So that's where most of the time, Step one, choose a regular account. There's a number of snapshots. Ooh, we could do a whole show just on snapshots, but this is just a copy and paste of an entire account. Um, this could be the funnels, the automation, email copy, even there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I'm gonna encourage you to start from blank. Brand new, because once again, you can always go back and add a snapshot to an account. What you can't do is remove a snapshot from an account. <laughs> You just can't do it. You, you'd have to manually delete out all the parts and pieces. So I encourage you, first account you're doing, just make it blank and you can, you can grow from there. Um, you can, by default, there's like a search connected to, to Google. Um, so if, you, if, you, if your business is searchable on Google, you can search for it, it'll pre-fill information. Or in a lot of situations, you just add account manually. So I'm going to create this manual account and I'm going to go through and put in my information or the business information, right? So I'm, I'm filling out... Um, all of the things that uh, have to do with the, uh, you know, the account owner. Then there's the business name. This business name is also going to be the name of the sub account. This doesn't have to actually be a business name, but just know that's what it's going to be referred to as. And so most of the time you are doing a business. So it's like, you know, it's my SAS. Sorry, I'm the first one. And then they just make you fill out all of the information <laughs> that are, you know, is pertinent to a business typically, like your address information and um, things like that. So I'm going to quickly fill this out, you know, complete the whole process. It does not take a long time to uh, get this set. 
and uh, time zone is the last one that you're you're required to actually have set there. So you fill out the information, hit save, and you've done it. You have effectively created a sub account. It'll take you to kind of the sub account management area where you have a number of different options that you can choose through in terms of reselling options. You could turn on SaaS mode, um, all the sort of stuff that, that that is part of the sub account. But you've done it. You've created the sub account. It's done. So from your brand, their sub accounts are independent of users. So right now, I've created a sub account that has no users. We'll do another show just on users and understand the dynamic there. But um, right away, I've created that sub account. If you want to create a user, you can do it in two places. You can switch to the sub account. Just that there's a big button there that says go to the sub account. This now takes me into the sub account. If you're if you're noticing, you know, my aesthetic is a little bit different than the, the native high level one. It's just because we use the theme builder from HL Pro Tools uh, to make it look look a little fresh. But um, then there's settings for the sub account you'd go to, and then there's my staff. You see by default in a new sub account that you create manually, there's no staff in there. There's no people, <laughs> no users. But you can click on the add employee and go ahead and add a user to it. So if I was doing this for my father's business, this would be the process that I would run, especially if I didn't want to charge my dad. <laughs> so if I didn't want to charge my father and I was just, I would create that sub account manually, which I just did. And then I would go through and add him as a user. Um, you know, you, you've got a lot of options here for, you know, his regular details, the, his permissions for the role. I would, We'll talk about user roles, but I would make him an admin for the sub account. But you, if you do it from this angle, you only have the option of admin or user. And, um, and then I would hit save. And now he would be able to log in and only see this one sub account. I, as the agency user, could go to all of the sub accounts. He would only see one of them. And now you're kind of starting to imagine this is the experience if you were reselling this or white labeling it to other users is they would be able to, they'd get their credentials for one thing and they would just log into your domain and see one account kind of like this where they could start to use it and, and put together all of the, the marketing tools that, that high level comprises. So that is step one for a lot of folks, how to create your first sub account and understand the dynamic there between, you know, that you have to create an account for yourself even though you also have an agency view to manage all of your all of your effective accounts. Yeah, your first sub account is usually going to be like your brand's account, like your public interfacing thing you're going to build out. And so, awesome. Thank you so much for walking through it, through that with us. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of these high-level hot takes. And so if people, if, if you see or uh, if there's something you want us to cover, please leave us a comment and let us know. We'll make sure to prioritize that.